This is this is a very difficult interview. You said it was going to be easy. You lied. <laughs> so you guys are from New York. Talk yeah, about that. Brooklyn. What, Brooklyn. Okay. So talk about how that has shaped um, you guys' worldview and um, also you guys' relationship as well. Growing up in Brooklyn, like kind of like what he said, like. Um, you got to be a certain way to survive and you can't be naive and you can't be gullible. You get taken advantage of things like that. So that does translate into your relationship as well. And that can cause problems. Mm, I'm going to say this. I lived in New York for a little bit. Mm. New York women, Brooklyn women, maybe Harlem, the Bronx, have a very bad reputation for being super masculine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your experience with that? And how would you, um, let's say you're explaining it for, to a dude from the South who's thinking about, oh, I might try to go to New York, find my queen to be. <laughs> like, how would you explain how he needs to navigate Brooklyn women or New York women? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> Tread lightly. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, not. <laughs> I think that um, a lot of it is sensationalized. Like a lot, dude, because it's fun, it's popular, and that's what you see. Just like people think, you go to Brooklyn, you're gonna get robbed. You're gonna get. I never got robbed, so it's always the more dramatic things that get shown and is promoted, but not everybody's like, really everybody's like that. There's a lot of nice females in Brooklyn or whatever that is not loud and <laughs> masculine or whatever, but there, there are some that- Hey, my nigga, you know, yeah, we hear about it. <laughs> that's not, that's not the majority at okay, all. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah. There are some that are like that, and they, it's kind of like they have to be like that because who else is going to be like that for them? Mm. Who else is going to protect them? A lot of them don't have their dads or whatever. Mm. Or if they do, he ain't, you know. When, when I'm putting these videos together, I'm not necessarily thinking about the person in the chair as much as I am the people who identify with the person in the chair. So for other people who identify with you, they have a similar personality, they have a similar background, whatever the case may be. Um, why is a convo a good match for you? Okay. So he is my strength. I'm very shy and <laughs> sometimes I don't speak up through myself, or, but he'll do it for me. Or I'm more boring and he's the adventurous one. He kind of pulls me out of my shell and we have fun together. Like, like I would be apprehensive, but I'm like, come on, let's just do it. Let's just try it. And I'll end up having fun. Like, okay, fine. That was fun. Like with this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I promise you, you're going to see it and be like, that's me. Oh, I'm not going to look at this. Oh, well, he's going to see it and be like, that's you. He's going to see it and he'll tell me about it. See, like that. Like, I don't watch our shows. Really? No. Interesting. I don't, I okay. Don't. He watches them and he'll say, you know, you did good. And if something he wants, like, I need you to speak up or whatever, then I'll do it. <laughs> Or even so with the children, I do sometimes need him to be that backbone, like, you know. So I you know how they say opposites attract. We are opposite, but where he where I like, he picks up for me. And where he likes, I pick up for him. So some we got girls, sometimes you need to be a little softer. <laughs> So I'm not softness. And <laughs> it's just, he's just such a, he'll, he'll do whatever he got to do for me. And he builds me up and makes me feel comfortable. 
doing things that I probably never would have done on my own. He opened my world up to a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> he makes me laugh all the time. Even if it's the corniest thing, I'm like, you're so lame. <laughs> Just being so lame will make me laugh because he's trying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, things like that. If I'm working and he's home, he'll like do the laundry or wash the dishes or cook, things like that. And I'll do the same for him when he's at work and I'm home. Um, so that works together. Like we kind of like balance each other out, mm -hmm. and that's what makes the, the one for me. <laughs> Since we got connected, you know, me and him have had some conversations and things like that. He is definitely a very alpha personality type. And what's interesting about that is these days that personality type in black men isn't necessarily celebrated. You're chauvinistic. You're you know what I'm saying, compensated, whatever the case may be. What do you think we're missing as far as women who have so much to say about men who like to take charge, men who like to be, you know what I'm saying, in, 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 in control? What do you think is missing in their understanding or their appreciation of men like that? Men Don't like get your husband? it twisted. I do say things to him and I... <laughs> Yeah, he, he likes to be the alpha male and I may be quiet in person and everything, but when I have something to say, I'll say it to him. <laughs> um, and I try to just use his logic, like sometimes what you're saying is not what it is. Um, but he makes good points and sometimes I gotta step back and like, you're right, because it's, you are a person. I think people need to look at each other as people, not oh, you're a man, you're a female, people. Like, be kind. I wouldn't want to hurt your feelings and make you sad. And if this is doing that, then what kind of person am I to be hurting another person purposely? Um, I think you just got to break all of those, um, like preconceived what? notions, misconceptions, not even that, just the, um, I don't want to say stereotypes. It's not, the I can't think of the word. Assumption. Assumptions. Peel back. The layers, like, okay, labels. That's labels, what, okay. Labels. Okay. Don't look at the label, oh, he's a black male. He's this, she's that. Look at people as people, not their color, their, what they're doing, their ethnic um, job, all of that. Look at them as actual people. And would you want to be treated, a certain, or your child to be treated a certain way? And... A lot of girls now, I'm scared for my son from what I hear. But then sometimes some things gives me hope. Like this is just social media and they're going to put out the worst because that's what brings the views. I'm hoping people aren't, the majority of people aren't like that. I'm not sure. But from what I see, I'm scared because these girls are out here. Like he would say, um, they're hungry. That's why they need a date. And that makes me so like, really? That's real, that's real, yeah. That's so sad. That, like things like that is kind of like, wow. I get taken aback by that. Um, that whole alpha male thing, me being, them being in control, women being more masculine, that's a, that story is never going to go away. <laughs> it's so much to it that nobody's ever going to win that argument because you can argue on both sides and 
not come to an agreement or you agree to disagree. I let him lead on certain things until I feel like, wait, no. I don't think that's cool. And I'll talk to him about it. And whether he agrees with me, then we'll go forward. If he doesn't, then, I mean, ultimately, most of the time he does. So I don't know. <laughs> Not agree with me, but he'll just do what I want. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he loves me. <laughs> okay let me ask you this what do you think like when we're talking about whether when y'all are talking about it or the internet or other people barbershops beauty shops what do you think is at the core of this black gender war what do you think men are missing women are missing we are missing as black people like how do we how do the single people watching this maybe achieve what you guys have? That's a hard question. It, it's hard even for like people that um, have been single as an adult. It's even harder for me because I've never been single as an adult. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I can't relate to them in that way. So, I don't know. Um, from what I see, it, I would, I would say, listen to each other. Because, um... And when the guys say that, oh, females are spoiled and things like that, I can see that. I can definitely see that. <laughs> but then I could also see women were silenced for the most of humanity. Oh, yeah, we were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now they want to talk. They have points, too. Just the, listen to them. But then, uh, then a lot of these females now are not saying great things. I don't know what happened with that. I don't know. <laughs> mm. To use somebody, to use people for their assets, just that, like, you don't even want to get to know them, like them or anything. You just want to use their money as well. And I feel, I think a lot of females are doing that now. I don't know if it's their age, like younger females, because they see social media. I think that plays a big role in this whole gender war thing. Um... Cause they're seeing all, oh, she has this, she has that. I want that too. How, what do I gotta do to get that? Really, she could have just borrowed that and returned it. You don't, but you don't know. The image, the oh, image. you see the image, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's sad. And then guys, all they see is, oh, she looks like this, she looks like, I want that. But then can't handle that because that's a lot of attention. Facts. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think social media really, really, really hurt relationships. And um, black people, we historically always want to jump on someone else's bandwagon and not stay on ours. I don't, so <laughs> we do need to come together as a people, and sometimes I don't understand guys when they, they like, sometimes I feel like they're not on black women's side. Mm. And it's weird because, yeah, you are a man, 
but you're a black man. So you should understand what it is to be discriminated against. And you should be able to somehow understand a little bit of what women might be going through being discriminated against just because they're a female. But they don't. They don't sympathize from what I see on social media again, which may not be true for the majority. Um, dad's not being around. I think that also took a lot from the black relationships, the black families and the moms. Some of them aren't good moms. All right, all right. And yeah, it's, and then you bring that trauma into your kids and then they grow up and bring that into their relationships. That's a big reason why there's this this um, distance and disconnect between women and men. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I I will. The only thing I'll say, and I think Combo was going to say something similar. Black women have always had a voice. Mm. I'm Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And in our culture, um, well, I'm more specifically Igbo. And in our culture, on the surface, it looks like the men are just a whole bunch of combos, right? <laughs> They're a whole bunch of alpha males. Mm -hmm. um, but then there is a female delegation called the Umwada. They're the first mothers of the community or the first daughters. That's how it translates. And what's interesting is People might assume that if you want to get something done, you, you got to go to the chiefs, mm -hmm. right? But really, one of the first places you have to go is to the women. Because not only do the women control the chiefs, the women also control their sons who are the warriors. Mm -hmm. So in African society, women have always had a voice. When we came over here as enslaved Africans, it was also put... Like the structure was created where it was a matriarchy. The woman was in charge in an attempt to emasculate the man. Now, when feminism came around, that's when white women convinced all women, you haven't had a voice. Then they started pushing out movies like Color Purple. They started pushing out narratives of these patriarchal, domineering black men who were abusive, when really it was their husbands. It was the white women's husbands that they had an issue with. But a lot of our women drank that Kool-Aid. And then we get to today where a lot of women, to your point, they're not even trying to listen. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time where you have a Kevin Samuels, where you have the guys with podcasts who are actually saying what men actually think. And a lot of our women, a lot of our sisters don't know how to deal with that, mm -hmm. you know, because they've never had to listen to men. They didn't have to listen to you on a plantation because you weren't in charge. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to listen to you, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the 80s because you were in prison for crack. <laughs> and I was more educated than you because I went to college. Right. So I think a lot of a lot of times, a lot of our our history gets kind of mixed up with white women's yeah. situation. And then we're like, but you did that. And I'm like, I ain't do none of that. That's Jerry. But I'm getting blamed for it. To some extent, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I never... I grew up in a mom and dad household. They were together. They're still together now. And my mom, yeah, she talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, he doesn't really talk that much. But at the end of the day, it's kind of what would, he would say. But it would come through my mom. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Um, and you did like the, if you're not there, I don't have anybody to listen to. Mm -hmm. And then you come in and you're telling me what to do, but I've been living with all my, you know, I'm not saying for me, but mm -hmm. the black women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I've been doing this on my own and I've been surviving on my own all this time when you weren't there. Now you come in and you want to kind of like tell me what to do? <laughs> what makes... <laughs> the disconnect. Yeah. What What is your... Philosophy. Let, let's say you were, what's that song? If I ruled the world, if you were president for a day, if you were president of black women or you're president of the black delegation and you were like, okay, my first order of business is to solve this gender war. What do you think or how do you think we should approach it? What, what should happen first? What should happen second? What do men need to do? What do women need to do? <laughs> No. <laughs> it's difficult. It's not an easy answer or question. No, it's not, especially if you're not prepared to right. answer that question. <laughs> but anything, I just want organic, whatever's on your mind. Um, Take your time. No rush. Men are competitive inherently like you know and they are selfish and and I say this only because when the world wasn't civilized like how it is now you had to be mm. but I think that they still carry on that you don't have to be a lot of wars and stuff is because of men's greed and their want to be the top and the best in the when why can't you just settle for what you got why do you have to go after someone else's i don't understand like with the white people coming into africa to take people why and i feel like all men do that, and it's, you don't have to. This, this world is huge. We have enough for everybody. I don't know. Women. God. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with women? We do need to listen more to how they feel, because they do have feelings. They do. <laughs> That's the other, like, in society, it's like you're supposed to be a man and not have feelings and not. So, and that, that's how you guys made it. You guys made it to be, this is the way a man is supposed to be. You're not supposed to show feelings. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And we follow that rule. Because that's how y'all put it. We didn't set that rule up for you guys. Y'all did. And we're going to follow whatever y'all say because y'all are the leaders of the world. So. We. They do have feelings. And we should listen to them and care about their feelings and get that whole macho man. Oh, they don't care. They don't. They're not. They're not supposed to care. They do. We're human. All humans have emotions and feelings. And it's just that that we don't care. We need to get that whole um, box of what a man should be out. I think that needs, and what a woman should be. I think all of those boxes need to go away. Cause it's not, it doesn't apply for everyone. If you want to be that way, fine. But don't down someone else for wanting to be another way that makes them feel good and comfortable. A lot of the gender roles, I would get rid of that. Mm -hmm. No such thing as gender roles. I think that would be the first step. <laughs> Second step, <laughs> um, educate everybody, everybody, because <laughs> a lot of things, 
a lot of reasons people get into um, arguments and debates and is because they don't know enough about that other person or that other culture or that other. And when you get educated, you can kind of like, oh, well, they do this because, you know, that's how they do things. It's not wrong that they do it that way. That's just how they do it. Okay, fine. Unless it's like inherently wrong, like you're killing people, of course. That's just wrong. There are some basic just no-nos. Um, <laughs> what else would I do to get over gender wars? Um, I think money plays a big issue in that as well. Um, because a lot of women are going to school and getting the higher paying jobs and that kind of, I guess, make men feel not needed because they can take care of themselves now. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you would do with that. <laughs> Everybody. And Kurt, I don't know. There's a lot of things you can unpack with that. Like, why aren't, if you see women going out and getting it, why aren't you? Mm. What is holding you back from doing that? So I get those things that are holding them back, I guess I would get rid of that because a lot of people would say racism, not like money, they can't afford it. They have to take care of their family so they can afford to go to school or whatever to get those higher earning jobs or I don't know, whatever other um, obstacles are in their way 